I wanted to show you a tool that I've been working on to help me streamline my ground texture setup. I've been looking to find a way to combine everything that I need into a couple nodes so that you can download a few textures and then it's just plug and play from there. I made this demo scene as a proof of concept, which I can break down in another video. So leave a comment if you are interested in that. However, I wanted to show you a tool that is the foundation of this scene. All right, so as you can see here, when I use a single tile texture, uh, even though the subdivision surface is pushed all the way up to six, this scene looks very bland, even though there is a lot of fine detail. And you can see even when I turn the foliage and all the other scatter systems on, it looks better, but it still looks a little bit bland. Now you can see that when I switch to the material mixer setup, you get four different layers all mixed in in a realistic way. So the main thing I wanted to do today was not give a full breakdown of this scene, but give a breakdown and sort of a crash course on how to use this master material mixer setup. Right here you can see that we have our four BSDF textures and then our texture scaler, which is basically a fancy texture coordinate node with some adjustments on it. And then we have the material mixer and this is where everything comes together. So I made this file available for download in my Gumroad, which I have linked in the description. Here we are in the file. When you open it up, you'll see two objects, the ground plane and the water plane. If you don't need water in your scene, you can just select that and delete it. And then when you go into the material mixer node on the ground, just bypass this water line node group right here. Also, once you download this file, you can take these nodes and add them to the asset browser like I have here. So you can just drag and drop them into any scene that you need. I have these textures made just to demo the features. Um, but as you can see, it's a very simple, basic PBR setup. We have the vector input, normal map through a principled BSDF, and then we have that plugged into the output. One thing to note is that you do need a displacement for this to work, and you do need to plug that output into the group output of the material node group. And I won't get too into how the texture scalar node is going to work. It's still very much a work in progress. Um, you don't really need to worry about this tool right now. This is kind of a work in progress for using this whole setup with larger landscapes, which I have not sorted all the weird quirks out yet. Um, but yeah, keep in mind, this is still very much in development in my own workflow. But right here we have the vector outputs for each respective material. Then we have the texture scale for each respective material. If I go here, you can see that basic default setup with all the default settings. When I move one of these, it's just going to tile it. If I turn this subdivision surface up a little bit, you can see that this slider right here increases the displacement strength and each of these gives independent adjustment. That's basically what this whole material group is is just making it so that you can adjust all these individually. All right, let's get into how the actual material mixer node works. This is what you'll see once you add the materials that you're going to use. As you can see, if I turn the base height for everything all the way down, we're just gonna get that first layer and then watch this. So as I bring the base height up just for the rocks, you can see how the whole texture moves up very evenly, which still looks cool. It's still very repetitive. That doesn't really fix our issue. So what you can do is you can add just a simple noise texture, bring that in here, and then plug the factor into the breakup mask. Right away, you see that nothing's changed because the breakup influence is set at zero. So let's go over here and start turning that up. And you can see that it's starting to pull down some certain areas of the texture in a way that still lets the height poke through. Say if we turn this down, you can see how the whole thing starts to shift. And then if I put a color ramp in, you can see how we can compress this. So as you can see, the seams in between the layers are still very harsh. So what I added was a breakup sharpness slider. You can start bringing that down and it'll start blending these two textures together. This is definitely going to be up to your references and your personal preference. I just always find myself playing around with all three sliders together. You can use the same technique for the other ones, add different values to these noise textures. And then once you start bringing up that base height, you can see the other layers start poking through. 
So then another cool tool I added was the false color. So if you turn that on, it'll assign different color values to each layer. So you can see how these two ground textures are very similar in color. But when I turn this on, you can see all that breakup gets very, very sharp. Like I said, you can adjust all these values. If I want to adjust the breakup sharpness, make it a little bit softer, I can absolutely do that as well with the rocky blue layer too. And also, you don't have to use a noise texture. I made this so that you can also use this splat map or something like that if you have maps exported from another software such as Gaia. So this is definitely still a very early version of this tool. My main goal is to make it useful, but also super intuitive and easy to incorporate into other workflows. I don't want to build the entire scene around this. I just want to be able to add it and throw some textures onto an already existing scene to make it that much more realistic. All right, uh, here we're back to my working proof of concept file. I did want to show you this water. So if we zoom in real close, this is still on low subdivision, but you can see how if we go back to the landscape texture, if I bypass this, it's a very sharp transition. Without this, it's a little bit more jarring. And then when I plug this in and start adjusting it, you can see how we can darken this area and add a ring around the shore just to sell that realism and get some darker edges around the water areas. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit too much. Bring it back just a tad. But yeah, it looks good right now, but it looks really good at higher subdivision levels. I have this super simple water texture. You can see it kind of right here. Um, it's really just a noise texture and a wave texture. Noise texture is plugged into the roughness, run through a couple color ramps, and then the wave texture is just plugged into a bump and into the normal. So there's no physical displacement in this. It's just a flat plane. And then you can see how when I raise and lower it, it is influencing the shoreline of the material mixer. So actually, if I go back to the material preview and turn off the water for a moment, you can see how I'm just isolating the z-axis and then taking the absolute of that so I get the positive and negative directions and then I'm squeezing that through a color ramp and then mixing that with just a regular glossy BSDF with the color set to something similar but a little bit darker than the shore and the roughness turned almost all the way down. You can see that is the result and that all gets mixed through here and then into the final. So like I said, you can snag this demo file from the link in the description. And if you find that it helps with your own workflow, you can add these nodes to your asset browser and make sure to subscribe to my channel and drop a follow on my Instagram account to keep up with further iterations of this tool. Thank you.